Welcome to Daily Reading the Word for December 26th. I'm Jonathan Kinsler. Today's scripture reading comes from Haggai chapters 1 and 2 and Revelation chapter 17. The title of my devotional is The Lamb Who Is the King. And we're looking at Revelation chapter 17 verse 14. And it says, These will wage war against the Lamb. The Lamb will overcome them because he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And those who are with him are the called and chosen and faithful. In Revelation chapter 5 verse 5 to 6, the Lion is presented as the Lamb. Here, the Lamb is declared to be the Lord of lords and King of kings. The Lamb is humble, gentle, and forgiving. But he is not to be considered weak. He also is a Lion. He also is the omnipotent God, Judge ruler over all, and the conquering king. Although the world is united against the Lamb and will wage war against him, the Lamb will overcome them. Will humanity bow their knee to the true king, the one who gave his own son to redeem them? That's the question of Revelation. First of all, of course, going toward his people. This is who we are. We've confessed him already. Um, Will we continue? Will we endure? What about the world? Revelation emphasizes a theme of idolatry, which is especially seen in the in those who worship the dragon and his image. It's seen from Revelation chapter two, verse fourteen and twenty already um, to the letters to the, to the churches, um, and in many other places. Revelation chapter nine, verse twenty, and also in chapters thirteen, fourteen, and sixteen. And then in Revelation chapter 19, verse 20, it says, And the beast was seized, and with him the false prophet, who performed the signs of his presence, by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burns with brimstone. John holds the image of the Lamb before us because it contrasts with the twisted and perverted concepts of power, authority, and worship that is represented by the beast and those who worship him. We become like that which we worship. The horrific images of the prostitute reflect everything that the dragon is. But God's people, on the other hand, are the called and chosen. They become like the Lamb. They are also faithful. Um, and that's what how Jesus is described, remember, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. Um, and we also are faithful. Not It's not faith of our own. In fact, remember, it's a fruit of the Spirit. It's something that the Spirit produces in us. Remember, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. He puts his fruit, he puts his character in us. The the reminder to Christians is that you cannot compromise your worship of the Lamb in order to be acceptable to the world. Otherwise, you will become like the world and share in God's wrath against it. You can't serve two masters. The epistle of 1 John ends with this theme, guard yourself from idols. Is Jesus Lord of Lords? Does anyone else hold such sway in your life? Do you love the Lord with all your heart without reserve? That's the first commandment. Love God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, everything that you are, holding nothing back. And then the second commandment flows out of it. Love your neighbor as yourself. But we must love God first. He gives us then what we need to love other people. We have to have the right priorities. And that's what this is about, is that... We serve the King of kings and Lord of lords, who is the Lamb. He laid his life down for us. And he asked that we would also become like him, that we would also lay our lives down for others. We can do that if we receive the Lamb into our lives. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you've done in sending us Jesus Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, but he's also the Lord and coming King. And we thank you that, Lord, he he reigns over all of our lives. He reigns over everything. And one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Lord, let us, for us, be that, let that be now. We will worship. We will confess him. Um, we will worship you in private and we will worship you in public. Uh, Lord, let us not be ashamed of, of the Lamb and what he's done for us. And let us not compromise our faith. Let us not compromise our lifestyle, but live for you and you alone. In your name we pray. Amen.